Hi, I'm Chris, I'm a curator. And I'm Rachel, I'm an educator. We both work at the Spencer Museum of Art at the University of Kansas in Lawrence. Can you tell us what a curator does at the museum, Chris? Oh, sure, Rachel. I work with the art, I take care of it, and I also help to interpret it and make exhibitions about it. Mm -hmm. And as an educator, I get to do projects like this where I'm working with our art and the different audiences that come to the museum, like students in elementary, middle school, and high school, and even the university students and adults who come to the museum to see our collection. Today, Rachel, I wanted to show you this small little album by um, a Chinese artist named Zhang Xiong. And it has a really beautiful title. It says, 100 Flowers opening in the palm of your hand. You can see I could open it up. It's a very old book with some, um, these are places where some insects have eaten the paper. Mm, delicious. Because mm, it's nice, delicious <laughs> paper. And then we come to the very first painting. So here are the flowers in the here palm of your hand. Here are the flowers in the palm of her hand. Yes. And this is the basic composition that we'll see throughout the album, where you have a flower in the middle, mm -hmm. and then there's usually a four-character um, inscription, either describing the flower or kind of some sense that the flower helps you feel. Mm -hmm. So I notice on this page we have this red stamp here in the corner that really stands out. What can you tell us about it? That is what we would call the artist's seal. And it is characters of the artist's name. So it's sort of like a signature. Mm -hmm. And this is the only place in the album where it appears. And the inscription tells us that it's actually two flowers a magnolia and a crab apple tree. So I noticed this album is much larger than this one, but we also have a, a similar kind of silk here. Yes, it has also a, the same kind of silk brocade. Mm -hmm. And this one is, might be a little difficult to make out, but it actually has some cranes on it. Mm -hmm. And this one, I think, has bats which is um, a symbol of um, luck, oh. yes, in Chinese culture. But also you'll, you'll notice there's some very interesting um, similarities. Mm -hmm. We also have a title page here, mm -hmm. and we have a title here with a small seal at the mm -hmm. bottom. So what's inside this one? Yeah, so I'll open it up. Sorry, it's a little bit difficult to open. So we open it up, we have these really large mm -hmm. Chinese characters. And this basically is the opening colophon or uh, introduction to the, to the album. Mm -hmm. And it tells us the name of the artist and that he is actually imitating an, another artist who is mi called Mr. Winterheart. Oh which is an artist's name for Jin Nong, who lived in the 17th century, the late 1600s, yeah. and painted plum blossoms. So we might see some more flowers in this This, this entire album is all plum blossoms. And I see we have another seal here like the other we talked about. Yes. But there, there's also another one over here. And then this information here is interesting because it tells us the exact date. 1888. So let's open it up and see the very first album. So again we have a kind of um, format that will be followed throughout the album. Mm -hmm. We have the plum blossom and with some inscriptions ar around the plum blossom and then a large page of text. So I noticed the writing here looks very different than the writing here. That's right, because here the artist is actually imitating Jin Nong. Mm -hmm. He's also imitating the style that Jin Nong used to paint plum blossoms. Mm -hmm. And this is actually supposed to be a very old plum branch mm -hmm. because of the dark 
notice these dark dots. Mm -hmm. So it's a little gnarly. A gnarly, yeah. like it has a really thick bark. Mm -hmm. But then you notice how delicate the plum blossoms are. So what, what do we know about plum blossoms in Chinese culture? Well, they're often seen as a symbol of the winter, mm -hmm. but they're also a harbinger or the sign that spring is on its way. Mm -hmm. Because oftentimes plum flowers will bloom when snow is still on the ground. Uh -oh. That sounds beautiful. Yes, so because, because of that, they're seen as symbols of um, perseverance during difficult times. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this one, again, we could see like with the other album, rather than actually talking about the look of the plum blossom, it talks about its fragrance mm -hmm. floating on the mist oh. on a misty day. Yeah. This album was probably, it was, it was commissioned by an individual who asked this artist to make the paintings here. And then the owner of the album actually made this calligraphy here mm. and you can see the style is very di different and distinct this seems much more fluid yes mm -hmm. it's sort of like cursive writing mm -hmm. well, can you tell us more about the process of painting and writing with a brush how about i ask my friend wei tian to show us that would be great okay so Rachel, this is my friend Wei Tian. Hi Wei Tian, it's nice to meet you. Hi Rachel, nice to meet you too. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Uh, my name is Wei Tian and I'm a doctoral student here at the University of Kansas. I've been in Lawrence for about six years. Mm -hmm. Wei Tian, where are you from originally? Uh, originally, I came from Wuhan, a city in central China <laughs> along the Yangtze River. Tell us about how you learned about calligraphy. Well, uh, I began my very basic training when I was around seven or eight. Uh, my more formal training started when I was in college. Wonderful. What are you gonna What are you going to use today to write calligraphy? So today, uh, I'm going to use mainly the brush. Uh, the upper part of the brush uh, is made out of wood, while the lower part of the brush or the brush head is often made out of animal hair. And then, what about the ink? Uh, so today, I'm going to use the ready-made ink, which is contained in this bottle. And I'm going to open the bottle and then pour the ink out into the ink stone, which sits right next to me. Mm. And is the paper something that is machine-made? Uh, actually, the paper over here is handmade. Uh, in English, this type of paper is often known as rice paper. Uh, but it's not made of rice. Uh, instead, this type of paper is often made of fibers of the sandalwood. And what are you going to write today? So today I'm going to write the Chinese characters for calligraphy or shufa in Chinese. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean, literally? Uh, shufa means the method of writing or the way of writing. How, would you hold, how do you hold your brush? So the very basic way of holding the brush uh, is to use your is to use your first three fingers of your hand, and then you're going to pu put it out and then hold the brush firmly like this. And that gives you really good control. Yes, it gives, give, gives me very good control of the brush, as well as very even pressure to oh. the brush tips. Great. Should I start doing now? Yes, please. We're so excited okay. to see you begin. So you'll see, Rachel, that he takes a very steady approach to the writing, placing the brush tip down on the paper. So it seems like there are um, uh, strict ways of um, approaching this, a very principled practice, I guess, which 
I think relates to that idea of this being the method of writing. That right. You follow these prescribed methods of doing this. And also studying how um, other masters of calligraphy in the past have written. Mm -hmm. And that's one way to learn how to, to um, brush really beautiful calligraphy is to study the works of past artists. So there's the character Shu, which in contemporary Chinese can mean book, and it can also mean to write. Mm -hmm. And now he's beginning the second character, which means method, mm -hmm. and can also be found in the contemporary word for law in Chinese. Here are the two characters. Wonderful. Thank you for so much for showing us how uh, to do calligraphy today. Thank you for having me here. It has been a pleasure. Mm -hmm. Do these relate in any way to the albums we saw earlier? Yes. So like we have just said, the very basic ways of receiving uh, calligraphic training is to learn from earlier masters, like the ones that we have just seen on the albums mm -hmm. and the paintings. Those are the models of calligraphy for mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. So we saw um, several different kinds of text written in calligraphy alongside the paintings of mm -hmm. plum branches and the other flowers. And one thing that's very important to me is by the demonstration today is that it shows the enduring legacy of calligraphy in East Asian culture to this day.